Okay, uh, shall we start? So, Musa is here? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes, can we can start. Sir, how are you going to do it? Uh, I asked uh, Pinto to arrange uh, two uh, uh, well, cases uh, yeah. okay. uh, with video. Uh, who has got it? Uh, Dilu, please. Pinto is not here because there was some yeah. problem with his phone. I think he couldn't get it. Yes. But uh, yeah. uh, he has a well, I think we have the videos, no? Uh, sir, I only have a power, uh, PDF, not a video. All right, put it on. Now, today's, uh, today what we are going to do is uh, uh, this is a form of uh, short cases. Now, in short cases, you are getting lumps, bumps. Uh, they are, we expect you to basically uh, elicit uh, the anatomical site of the lesion or lump, then the tissue plane, then uh, <clears throat> The consistency, those are the main three things. Based on that, coming to a probable diagnosis, then there may be a discussion, short discussion. But basically, we want to uh, see how you elicit physical signs to recognize the anatomical site, uh, the tissue plane, and the consistency of this lump. Uh, there are another set of uh, short cases where you get organomegaly, basically thyroid, parotid, submandibular glands, and the lymphadenopathies. Uh, they are, of course, you have to sort of elicit specific physical signs uh, uh, of those organs and related pathology also. So you have to have some idea about the uh, site of this organ and uh, important anatomical structures in close proximity to these organs and uh, possible common pathologies, right? So uh, those, uh, those are the other set of things. Then you get hernias. Uh, we all sort of are very familiar with that, but they are very common short cases. The other set of short cases you are getting are the stomas, intercostal tubes, uh, drains, external fixators, plaster cast, wounds, right? They are your observational power success. You have to observe what it is. And uh, then basically there are a few physical signs if there are like in sort of uh, external fixator, when there's an external fixator, you may uh, elicit few physical signs to see some complications. But uh, most of the other things you have to use your knowledge uh, for the sort of discussion which is going on from there uh, is from over here. Hello? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, Pramod, uh, can you take up uh, the stoma? Uh, so we will discuss possible questions we may ask. So all of us uh, can sort of think of uh, questions we may ask. Uh, so, uh, Pramod, can you take over from here? Yeah. About the, uh, do do we have a candidate ready for? Yes, sir. Right, okay. All right, so looking at this patient from a distance, can you tell me what you see here? Um, there is a stoma bag uh, on the right uh, eyelid, sir. There was a bandage uh, above the stoma bag. Uh, and some uh, liquid effluents are there. Uh, and the red color spout also there. Okay. So, based on this information, can you come to sort of a, a idea what this 
storm might be uh, it might be a helio storm why do you say it is an helio storm uh, because uh, the effluent is uh, more liquid and spout is there usually spout uh, spout are create to helio storm and uh, it is placed in the right eye like process uh -huh. right so do you think this storm was created recently or was it is it a old one uh, it was a recent one why do you say recently um the uh, color of the uh, storm uh, more red and there was a Bendage, uh -huh. bendage. So you you mean you mean with time the color of the stoma changes into a lighter color, or does it turn into black or blue? Uh, not really. Huh? Uh, there was a bendage. Uh, no, you so said the... there, it, it looks red in color, and that indicates that it was recently. Created. Why did you say that? Um, sorry, if, um, if it is neck closed or uh, obstructed, uh, become uh, black blackish. No, no, no. Put that. Put that out now. Uh, can now. I interrupt a little bit? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now. Uh, it is very important tactic how to withdraw when you make a mistake. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So that is also a very important thing. Are you a me? Someone give you not karan on the aqua than Hadan Hadan Nepal. Now you realize you have made that a mistake. No, right? Uh, so you also realized it. Now don't try to sort of correct it. The best way is sorry, sir, I did a mistake, right? Then the examiner can sort of proceed without asking other things, right? Uh, so accepting that also may count some marks, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are you are you are trying to just uh, go deeper and deeper, uh, trying to you know sort of put unnecessary in information the, in there. Uh, uh, then something which you have done a mistake, and others also we also feel that you understood that you had done a mistake, and you are trying to defend it. Uh, yeah. That is that is more important than uh, giving the right answer. Realizing that you have made a mistake is very important, right? So the <laughs> color of the stoma does not indicate whether it was done recently or not, right? Uh, yeah. I accept the other other uh, answers that you gave, and also, can you see the bag? Uh, yes. Yeah. What sort of a bag is it? You were describing the fluent also through the bag. Transparent, it's a transparent. All right. Does that indicate that uh, the storm was created recently? Uh, it can be, sir. Usually, what is the color of storm bag? Uh, both transparent and opaque. Uh, usually, we. Uh, why why do we have both colors, transparent and opaque? Um. If if we want to observe the uh, stoma, uh, we uh, usually use transparent. Right. So when do you think you need to observe a stoma? Uh, after the placement of the stoma. Uh, soon after it is created, right? So why do we need to observe soon after creation of a stoma? Can you think of any reason? Um, uh, to find out any uh, complications uh, occurs. Or not? Yeah. yeah, obviously. So I'm, I'm just interested in what are the complications. Um, in early complications, uh, um, necrosis, um, bleeding, um, retraction of the stoma can occur. Uh, in late complications. No, but I see. See, it's very important when you're facing a short case, you need to answer the question, right? Now, you're trying to put my question into an uh, answer that you have prepared earlier. 
my question was what do you want to see through this bag right it is common sense i know when you study you study as early complications late complications but it is not just recall of memory now you should be able to apply that knowledge into my question and answer me right so when i ask now now we've been building up a story you know so early part you put a transparent bag why you said to see any complications and i asked what are the complications so now you should know that what i'm referring to are the early complications that you were mentioning now when you start telling me early complications are these late complications are these i get the feeling that you are just trying to recall a list that you have already studied always answer the question it's not about just telling all the facts that you know so okay. your answer should be the, to to observe these all early complications such as necrosis right so you can observe a color change you can see whether the stoma is functioning what sort of a effluent is coming out right uh, and retraction can be seen yes uh, dehiscence can be seen lot of things that can be seen through that but then i didn't ask you about late complications in right so just just because you have list don't try to put all the list into every question that we ask that is not the way to score marks in short cases or viva okay you must answer the question it may be a one word answer that's okay just give the answer and keep quiet if you try to put in a lot of information unrelated information we feel that you didn't understand the question right because these these are the things that you have to do as house officer okay right so uh okay now how do you know that the stoma is functioning uh, uh from the from uh how to measure the fluent if the effluent is comes out uh, the stoma what else can come out what else comes out uh, through a functioning small intestine gas ah yes gas hmm? gas filling up in the bag is a good indicator that the stoma has started to function right yes. and uh, the effluent uh, sometimes you might think by seeing a little bit of serous fluid that the stoma is functioning but it is not right the fluent should be either bilious or it should be uh, fecular okay right now on the picture on the left uh, you can see some sort of a uh, what, what can you observe on the picture on the left on the small picture in said what can you observe there it's a spout uh huh why is there a spout in ileostomy um the effluent of the ilia ileostomy contain um, enzymes uh, uh it can cause uh, skin excoriation so we keep Uh, mm -hmm. Spout to prevent the skin exploration. Yeah. Okay. okay, right. What What else do we do to prevent the skin exploration? What else is practiced when um, you're having a stoma? Hmm? Uh, we We apply a paste uh, before. Uh, apply the base base plate of the stoma sir ah right okay so the base plate with the paste can also cover the skin uh, to prevent it from getting in contact with the fluid okay on the left can you see there is a sort of abnormality around the stoma the edema does can you see a reddish circle around the stoma Yes, sir. Is it normal? Hmm. Hmm. Just 
appears to be some sort of a hypersensitivity, isn't it? Mm. Allergic reaction probably to the base plate or irritation, skin irritation or dermatitis, right? Due to the base plate. So that is also a complication that can occur when there is a storm. Why? Can you tell me a few instances where we create an ileostomy? Um, in uh, in uh, ulcerative colitis and uh, uh, familial adenomatous polyposis, this is uh, we uh, remove the whole uh, colon. Uh, in that situation, we create an ileostomy. What do you call that? Um, end ileostomy. And what do you call that operation? Um, Proctocollect. No, to fan colectomy. Fan colectomy or call a pan proctocolectomy. Pan -proctocolectomy. You, you remove the rectum as well, right? Proctocolectomy, right? Right. So that is one instance, right? And what are, what other instances? Um, to uh, protect the um, sister anastomo inside. Ah, right. Yes, good. Right. Mm -hmm. So, can you can you tell me a difference between these two stomas that you just said anatomically? Um, so, are they the same? First one is the uh, uh, end ileostomy. Uh, mm -hmm. Second one, loop ileostomy. Right. Second one is a loop ileostomy. Right. Because it's temporary. Hmm? Just so, just because uh, now you said this is big because you said this is an ileostomy because it's on the right ileostomy. Hmm? Do is it a is it a rule or is it is it no. uh, definite that you always need to have ileostomy on the right ileostomy? No, sir. Uh, usually placed in the right ileostomy. You can place in other side holes. Yes. Uh, can you tell me a few? Uh, few uh, points that you would uh, think of before you mark the ileostomy site. Factors that you will take into consideration. Uh, you have to avoid the bony uh, prominent. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you have to avoid the midline of the body. And it uh, easily, it should be easily accessible site. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, what the, about the stoma back should be above the uh, uh, above the uh, lines the belt hmm? the belt line or the waist yeah, above the waist should be well, well away Huh? Right. Okay. Now this patient develops. Uh, you know, the nurse calls you and says, uh, "At night, this patient has already passed about uh, thousand two hundred milliliters for the last twelve hours." Right. You are the house officer. What goes through your mind? Uh, maybe an ileal flux. Ileostomy flux. Yes. Right. Okay. Good. So, what are the problems with ileostomy flux? Why are you worried? Um, there are more effluents, uh, so the uh, uh, electrolyte <laughs> loss is more, more potassium loss. More potassium loss. Mm -hmm. Can cause hypo uh, hypo so what is the the, the commonest uh, electrolyte in the intestinal fluid is potassium. Oh. Hmm? No sir. What is that? It's bi bicarbonate. Bicarbonate. Okay. 
Anything else that gets lost? Okay, so electrolytes, okay, we'll come back, come to that. Electrolytes, there will be electrolyte imbalances. What else? Someone losing 1,200 milliliters within 12 hours. Water. Um, dehydration. Yes. Okay. What can that lead to? When you, when you do water, what happens? Uh, hypovolemic shock. Before developing hypovolemic shock, what organ system gets affected? You are losing water from the body and then... Urinary. So what can the patient develop? A good kidney injury. Right, they can go into acute kidney injury. Huh? Right. So how how will you how will you uh, start treating this condition? Do you know the basics of treating this condition at house officer level? What will you do? Uh, so, so, so we have to uh, reduce the amount of fluid intake and uh, change to mm -hmm. uh, solid food. Um, um, I have to check the serum creatinine level. Um, before the creatinine, creatinine also you have to check, but before that, what I, what gets lost with this intestinal content? Um, don't you lose sodium and potassium both? Yes, both. So you do, do a serum yes. electrolyte. Serum right? electrolyte. Huh? Yes. Right. What sort of a what sort of a fluid will you advise them to take? Hypertonic. What do you advise people to take when they hypertonic? What, what is the hypertonic fluid you can take? Yes, sir. That is, what is the hypertonic fluid you can take in? Any talk. What happens if you take in hypertonic fluid? What do we ask these people to do? What do you ask a person who has a diarrhea to take? Oral no, rehydration. Ah, or, oral. Oral rehydration. Right. So is it hypertonic? Not hypertonic, right? If you take start taking hypertonic fluid, it's like mannitol. It will what will hypertonic fluid do? It will absorb more fluid into the intestinal lumen and it will increase your efflux. Right? You get you get what I'm saying. Okay. Right. What are the medications you can use to reduce the flux? Lopramide, codeine to reduce the gut motility. But right, so now the thing is, now if this was a short case, by now you have given all the right answers, right? But, uh, as an examiner, my inclination is to, you know, just pass you, just sort of uh, finish this encounter by just passing you, right? You will not score a lot of marks although you have given the right answer because the way I had to put a lot of effort 
and you, you made some fundamental errors about fluid and electrolyte uh, balances. Also, the way the way you are answering, it took more effort from my side rather than the candidate's side. Right? So, what do you think, sir? Yeah, yeah. Uh... So you are not confident in what you are saying. Uh, even you know, we have to prompt you. Right? Uh, so you you can improve a lot. Now yeah. you have basic knowledge. You are not confident in your knowledge, right? So uh, it is not only the practice, but sort of confident in yourself uh, and the knowledge which you have. Uh, he, he, he gave he gave most of the. Most of the answers he gave were right, but they were. Yeah. <laughs> you will not score marks for those. That's that's very uh, pathetic, isn't it? And like sometimes you right do very fundamental errors also. That is also yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> counterproductive. Uh, you did very few fundamental errors, but even a single fundamental error uh, uh, goes. Uh, really against you. Uh, so hopefully you should be confident in yourself and when you study also, right? Grab your knowledge, not the amount, right? Even if you know one or two early complications, that is more than enough, but you should be able to sharpen up to recognize what it is. And uh, uh, when you ask now, it took a lot of time to recognize that ideas from flux causes re dehydration. And you have you didn't mention about giving uh, IV fluids in case yeah. uh, now we can't sort of match that amount with oral fluids because that may cause more ideas from the plants. Uh, so if you watch or if you observe what is happening in the world, you would have come out with an answer. Uh, and uh, you couldn't recognize the electrolytes which are lost yeah. uh, in yeah. this condition. And they are sort of uh, giving uh, hypertonic solution. So all these uh, create a, a picture that you haven't worked in the world, but you just crammed uh, after finishing the appointment or sort of uh, uh, this thing, rather than a sort of a person who worked in the world. Uh, isn't it? A, yeah, what do and I also you, you can't make mistakes in like fundamental physiology like sodium potassium hypertonic hypotonic and so on i think uh, those are not forgiven at the exam and uh, even even when i ask the drugs you the, the, you know it's not just about giving the right answer it's about the sequence as well like you just say out of the blue loperamide uh, codeine or whatever but there's a sequence that how we do this right? that if you give it in that way, we know that you have observed what happens in the world. This is just recalling a list that you have studied. That, is, that will not get you marks at the exam. You need to get it into your head. Whatever we say, you all still think memorizing list will get you there. It won't, right? Uh, because the effort, is, well, effort becomes useless. At the end of the day, you have put a lot of effort you don't score marks because we can see we, we, we get the idea that you're trying to recall from a list. You have to say it as we do it. No, you limit the oral fluids, you give IV fluids, you can catheterize the patient, uh, you will start oral rehydration solution, and then you will send blood for electrolytes and creatinine. You will start on codeine containing drugs. And you know, I may, if you said codeine, I will ask you. How will you give codeine in Sri Lanka? You don't get codeine, oral codeine. That we use codeine plus paracetamol tablets. Those are the practical things that you pick up from the war. Because we had so many idostomy floods during the last uh, couple of months. If you observe them, we start with codeine and then we with paracetamol and then we give uh, loperamide, right? So the way you answer, we get the idea whether you have study the list or whether you have actually observed it in the what? The other thing from all this is that um, when you ask the, to describe what you see there on the left side and yeah. you actually can recognize the scoriation that, that's pretty obvious in the picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's, uh, yeah. 
yeah. it's very important to understand and express uh, what you actually see and, we, and exactly. we'll see the clinical features it's very important in exam point of view and the other thing is uh, when you ask question and uh, the answer came quite a uh, bit of time after the question yeah yeah that's very annoying as a exam yeah. yes <laughs> <laughs> Don't think that if you spend more time, uh, because it's a fixed time you get for the uh, short cases, you may score more marks or sort of the uh, the, the time you may do sort of mistakes are less. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't carry out with that kind of uh, idea also. And one thing that initially when you asked to describe what you say, you said there is a bandage on the... Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> You pretty well see that it's not a bandage; it's a plaster. Yeah. <laughs> right there, I decided that it will be a fifty or a fifty-five maximum. Yeah. Uh, because if you don't know bandage from a plaster, it's uh, you know as a doctor, it, it's not. It doesn't look very good. That uh, that is some. We payment, also know uh, that sort of, but sort of don't try to. Uh, Try to avoid sort of only that kind of mistakes. You could have just said dressing or something like that. Band-aids are not put like that. Uh, that's uh, okay. So basically, uh, you have to sort of recognize what the what this storm is. So you have given valid reasons to answer. And, uh, uh, we, want to, uh, we may ask sort of to recognize few complications, if any, uh, here. And uh, if there are no complications, we may ask sort of possible or anticipated complications and the management of few of them. Then other thing is sort of the indications for this kind of thing. And the most likely indication in this particular patient based on what you observe. Uh, uh, so those are the basic things which we may ask from a stoma, isn't it? Is there anything else? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. And then the more important thing is to answer the, the question we ask. Uh, what do you see? Right? Or what is this? You need to answer the question that the examiner asks. Uh, you shouldn't just put a, a fixed answer into, you know, try to put up a put up a fixed answer. Now, when I asked what complications you can see through the bag, you were he was trying to say uh, short term complications and long term complications and so on. Don't do that. Right? Just answer the question. Sometimes it may be very simple. You might think uh, they they always want a very high fi medical term. No, we just want you to say what is what is abnormal here. There is a reddish thing change around the storm or something like that. Even that is good enough because we are trying to gather whether you can observe, right? So if you observe that there is something wrong, you can later find out what it is. Uh, it's not about using a hi-fi term. Uh, you don't have to say there is a dermatitis due to the base plate or something like that. If you told me there is a, a reddish discoloration in the skin around the storm, uh, that is good enough. Because uh, as a house officer, then you know there is something wrong that should not be here is happening. Then you can call your somebody and tell there is something red. I don't know what it is, but it is abnormal. So the power of observation is checked in uh, short cases. It is not a drama where you practice, we also practice, and then come and do it, and we give you marks. Right? Should happen there in real life. What is this? This is a ball, right? Like that. So I think that is important that to, if you want to get marks in the exam. Uh, okay, so I think his performance, uh, basically you may score 50% marks, uh, yeah. but you are, you, are, you are quite capable of scoring more than that. Uh, yes. With a very little effort, you may jolly well score between 60 or 65 uh, easily. Uh, yeah. Uh, and for that, I think you don't have to study a lot more. You just yeah. have to organize your thinking pattern. Don't try to study more. You have enough knowledge there. If you study more, sort of, you may confuse more. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you knew basically everything. You knew the answers to all the questions, but you just your thinking pattern was not right there. So try to do that by practicing, not by studying. Don't don't sit and study about storm as it. Shall we move to the? Yeah. Aruna, uh, can you take him? Aruna, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so who's going to be the candidate here? Yes, sir, you can do it. All right, Nimanta. So Nimanta? What can you see there on the left side uh, picture? Um, patient having a plaster on the right chest and uh, there is a tube. Um, probably it is IC tube. will uh, attach to the drainage, uh, the drainage tube. And mm -hmm. patient having a plaster on the uh, right elbow. Elbow and cannula, uh, cannula on the right Oh. All right. And the right side picture showing the connection, rest of the tube yes. disconnected. Okay. So uh, on what occasions do you usually put this one? Sir? On what occasions do you usually put this tube in? So usually in pneumothorax patient, uh, in the pneumothorax, uh, in the primary pneumothorax, do not resolve with Aspiration uh, or uh, tension pneumothorax after initial uh, needle thoracosynthesis and patient with pneumothorax. Uh, um, patient with pneumothorax is ventilated patient and mm -hmm. patient uh, suspected with empyema. Okay. So uh, say there's a patient who has this uh, refractures and multiple refractures and also tension pneumothorax. So you put this tube in and then you see this uh, immediate gush of uh, air coming in. So if you're the house of this, so what can you, uh, what are things you're going to observe in this patient? Uh, the patient is clinically improving or not, if the patient has a shortness of breath it is improving or a patient has no features of dyspnea. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the insertion of the tube, there are fluid level is again, any uh, drain amount of uh, color of the drains and amount of the drains. Okay. So what is I going to observe in the, say in the bottle? In the bottle, sir, I can observe the uh, color of the drains, amount mm -hmm. of the drains. And uh, uh, there is any uh, bubbling of the bubblings right. or any uh, air fluid level is sinking. So what's the importance of bubbling and what's the importance of having it sinking? Uh, usually, sir, uh, bubbling occur in the patient having the pneumothorax. Mm -hmm. And uh, the singing is usually happen due to the pneumothorax or something uh, Hydrothorax in the fluid in the thorax. Oh, singing happens due to hemothorax, is it? Uh, draining of the hemothorax. Singing? I thought uh, during respiration you get singing normally. No, sir. Okay. Singing happens in the patient respirations. Yeah, that's right. Uh, okay. So, how much of the, say now, uh, when do you think that you need to remove this tube? Uh, if the patient is clinically improving, uh, mm -hmm. if the patient has uh, the hemothorax, if the uh, drain is uh, minimal low stopping, in the patient has suspected the pneumothorax, if the mm -hmm. bubbling is stopping. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. The, Patient is clinically, mainly patient is clinically improving. Right. So what are the parameters you go by? 
for you to say yeah. the patient has clinically improved? With the, with the auscultation of lungs, uh, with the uh, AI in case uh, improving in the affected sites, mm -hmm. and uh, the percussion notes, if the patient is percussion, usually in uh, pneumothorax, there is a dull in percussion, it is resolved. In the pneumothorax, mm -hmm. hypertestinal will be resolved. Mm -hmm. uh, in the, I can get the X ray. Yes. And uh, after X ray, the expansion of the lung can be seen. Good. Now, um, say that uh, this tube uh, is not swinging. On fine day, you observe that this, uh, the swinging has stopped. Right? But patient uh, still breathless. What do you yes, think? sir. Yes, sir. I think this is a, uh, there is a complication. If the tube is uh, dislodged or tube is blocked or changing of the tube can be occur. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do if you are the house officer? If the, there is a, I, I want to check the tube uh, uh, starting from the insertion point to the drains. And if there mm -hmm. is any king in, check for any king in and collect it. And there is any uh, blood flow uh, blocking the tube, I can squeeze it and dislodge it. And uh, uh, if there is any uh, mm -hmm. dislodgement of the tube, I can uh, inform the senior and put another tube. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you had reinsert a tube, so where would you insert it normally? Usually I insert it into the shape triangle. What's the shape triangle? Uh, it is bordered by anteriorly, lateral border of the pit major, posteriorly, lateral border of the latissimus dorsi, uh, below, uh, upper uh, upper border of the sixth fib. Usually enter in the fifth intercostal space, uh, above the uh, uh, above the border of the ribs. Why do you stay above the border of the ribs? Usually, the neurovascular bundles lies uh, below the uh, inter, uh, intercostal goo that is lie below uh, inferior, below uh, inferior border of the rib to uh, prevent damage. Okay. Now, say there is a hemothorax as well as pneumothorax. So, where would you uh, put your tip of the IC tube? Do you put two Usually, IC tubes or you put only one IC tube? Hemothorax and pneumothorax. Yes. Yes. I usually say uh, put one tube, uh, it is toward to the apex of the lungs. Oh, so how come the hemothorax get drained? The hemothorax. Will it be drained? No, sir, I have no idea, but I usually know. Yeah. Yeah. So initially we thought we had to put two tubes, uh, one directed downwards, one directed outward, up. So I think uh, we put only one tube, it still uh, it drains. Now, uh, um, so, um, okay. Uh, so Musa, have you got any, uh, anything else to talk about this? Hello? Pramod? Pramod? Sumu, sir? Ah, yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think he scored more than the previous candidate, is he? Definitely. He answered the questions. Uh, yeah. Uh, those are the sort of equally of questions which I can think. But one other thing which we can ask is sort of uh, 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 about the chest x rays. Uh, and sort of how do you confirm the place of the this thing, where it correct placement, uh, yeah. and uh, how much you insert? Those are the sort of uh, a little advanced things. If you if you back very well, sort of we may ask those things. Uh, uh, and uh, probably, how do you transport a patient uh, to the X-ray room after insertion of these things? Yeah. Uh, those are the other things that we may ask. But of course, sort of, uh, they are not the initial sort of questions. Uh, probably, if you done, if, if you do everything very well, sort of, we may ask those things. 
uh, uh, it's good, isn't it? Yes, I think it's good. Yeah, um, he may score more than 60, I think, uh, if he answers this. Anything else to add? Do you have got anything else to add? Uh, sir, as you mentioned, sir, I'm asking this, sir, that as we have only one safe triangle, sir, uh, are there any instances we put uh, two YC tubes, sir? We put only one, no, sir? Or we put only one. No, initially, uh, in you know, the old days, uh, we used to put two tubes, so one directed to the apex for pneumothorax, the other one directed downwards. But uh, it is useless now. Uh, now the current thinking is we put only one tube. One, two. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So now we get a patient with failed chest. So what would you do? What are the treatment modalities available to treat a failed chest? Nimanta, can you answer? So. Uh, Pale chest treatments are depend on the uh, mild to moderate to severe. Mm -hmm. Usually, in mild cases, uh, uh, we can only add analgesia, mm -hmm. and uh, and patient can go to physiotherapy. In the uh, moderate course, uh, the, we can give oxygen and IC tube infusion. In the mm -hmm. severe case, we want to do the mechanical version. That's right. If the patient is still hypoxic and uh, find it difficult to breathe, so you have to ventilate patients. Do positive pressure, pressure ventilation. All right. Yes. Good. So, sir. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Can we move to the next one? Uh... Yeah, I think so. What's the next one? Sir, that's all, sir. Ah, is that all? Right. Yes. Right. It's okay. Uh, uh, do you have any questions uh, from those two cases? Uh, no um, one, anything? Well, uh, um, um, yeah, uh, to, uh, I think uh, we discussed all the areas, but uh, in general about the short cases, um, uh, just to add to what we have already discussed about short cases, uh, in what you actually check in short cases, uh, why, why you tell, why you call it a short cases, we, we expect that uh, we, we we look for two things basically. We, we see whether you have uh, you have the ability to perform these physical signs uh, uh, clearly and understand, and then some of these diagnoses and coming to a diagnosis based on the physical signs. So that is one way of coming into a diagnosis, and also uh, also by uh, some of these are spot diagnosis, like in uh, in the iliostomy, like in the ICT. There's nothing much to diagnose. So those are those are you just see it and you know what it is. So uh, so we look at we, we we check whether you can look at something, observe something, and come to a diagnosis and do certain physical signs, and then coming to certain inferences based on physical signs and coming to a diagnosis. So that's a different kind of a skill that we check. Uh, whereas in long case, it's much more like a discussion. Uh, that that you do with the examiner. Here also, it's kind of a discussion. But especially in the first person who whom we saw, uh, I think uh, uh, as as Pramod said, his basic understanding was not that bad. But uh, the way he communicated, uh, way he way he expressed himself, actually made the examiner irritated. And especially when you when you don't get the answers. Uh, from the student, and you know that he can answer. And when you when you see that he is not answering, it's very annoying to the annoying to the examiner. So it's very important that you practice how to answer as well. 
So these are three things that you have to practice in a short case. Uh, observation, physical science and practice how to talk. Uh, I think we can, anything else to discuss? I think we can conclude today. Probably next time we'll have about four or five short cases. And uh... yeah. Uh, okay, this is the uh, start now. So yeah. next time we may have about uh, probably four would be okay for one yeah. hour, no? Yeah, I think. Okay, then we will wind up. Uh, thank you very much for joining. Good night. Good night. Thank you, sir. Good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.